Welcome to the 17th episode of Screen Scream on Viola. Today, I have two good news to tell everyone. Well, one of them may be not so good. So the first one is that after so many weeks that we've been talking about the same movies, well, at least two, I think, we've been talking about for two weeks, maybe, I'm going to introduce four totally different new movies or classic re-released movies this week. And the second news is that Screen Screen is going to move to a new place. So this will be the last episode on SoundCloud. And since the Mandarin version, the Mandarin episode is already at the new home, I think I can just tell you that the new home will be on Sound On. Almost all of the current episodes are already moved there, and as long as you search Screen Screen, you will still find the show. And I hope everyone can enjoy 70th episode. Let's listen to the first newly released movie we're going to talk about today. Memento. A man with short-term memory loss attempts to track down his wife's murderer. Been, or what you've just done. I can't make new memories. Everything just fades. What's the last thing you do remember? My wife. Wait, what? The introduction was so short. But the first new movie we're going to talk about today is actually a classic re-release. Memento is the famous director, the celebrated director, Christopher Nolan's second film. So when it was released, most people didn't know him, but it got him big fame. Because it broke the thinking structure of linear description, and the editing is just like montage, kind of like challenging the thinking logic of the audience. And the movie is adapted from his brother Jonathan Nolan's unpublished short novel. Memento ended up winning Waldo Salt Screenplay Award at Sundance Film Festival in 2000. The story is about Collecting pieces of memories to find out the real murderer for the protagonist's wife's death, and as the introduction said, the protagonist has short memory loss. So for his late beloved wife, Leonard, the protagonist, would tattoo all the clues he finds about the murderer on his skin, and tries to. Put all the pieces of memories together to find the real murderer. But something interesting is that 20 years ago, when the DVD was released in Taiwan, in order to help the audience understand the plot, there is a version that's chronologically edited, and this version was included in the DVD abroad because the director. Wanted to let the audience have the chance to check whether their understanding of the time is correct. But when Taiwan was going to release Memento, the distributor thought this is the real film, and it was released in that version. That's the reason why a lot of fans in Taiwan didn't really think Memento is such a good movie. But recently, a lot of moviegoers will go on forums and exchange comments or thoughts with fans overseas, or through film festivals. We finally understood that this is actually a mistake 20 years ago, and we realized that oh, so the flashback version is actually the real one. So a lot of fans really hope that. One day we will be able to see the real Memento on big screen, and that's the reason why, at the 20th anniversary, the original Memento is going to be re-released in Taiwan. So if you happen to be in Taiwan, you can go to the movie theater and enjoy Memento on big screen again. The second new movie we're going to talk about today is also a classic re-release. Let's listen to the introduction. Underground, a group of Serbian socialists prepares for the war in a surreal underground filled by parties, tragedies, love, and hate. I don't know about.
about you, but I believe there are a lot of people who have heard of Underground in 1995, but have never seen it. Same here. I've heard that Underground is a very good movie and is a classic, but I just didn't have chance to see it. And even after listening to the introduction, yes, that was short and it's pretty vague. I, I still don't really know what the story is about. But I think it sounds like a pretty interesting movie. And in the slogan, it says that there's a kind of love that's pretty loyal called revolution. And there's a kind of revolution that's hopeless. It's called love. Wow, that's pretty pessimistic, I would say. But this is what this story is about, because the reason why the movie is called Underground is because even after the World War II has ended, people underground still think the war is still going on. And that's the main idea of the movie. So the movie started in Yugoslavia in 1995. At an underground arsenal, people believe that the war is still going on, so they had no choice to stay in the dungeon making weapons for the revolution. In order to understand what's happening, we need to go back to 1941, when Yugoslavia was still under the possession of Nazis during World War II. One of the protagonists, Marco, wants to celebrate that his good friend Peter joins the communists. He invites some bands to his house to celebrate. And Marco's brother Ivan is a zookeeper. During the bombarding of Nazi Germany, Ivan only manages to save a chimpanzee from the zoo. And Peter, Ivan, these people are considered as revolutionists at the time. The thing is, Four years later, the World War II has ended. Marco has been promoted to something very important. But he and his wife, Natalie, decide to utilize these friends who are underground to make weapons for themselves. And they will ship these weapons overseas to earn money from this business. After knowing what underground is really about, I feel really sad and I feel that this movie is really dark. It talks about humanity and war is pretty sad of course, but how could you utilize your friends like that? And I do think this is a movie worth pondering. So if you have time, you can either go watch Memento or Underground this weekend. And it's time for us to get into Top 007. Yes, yeah, you might notice the difference because I want to align with the Mandarin version so we inserted a copyright free music at this part. Let's review what we had from last week. Top 3, Achu. Top 2, Sumiko Gurashi the movie. Top 1, Peninsula. So all of these top 3 movies are from Asia. It's either a Taiwanese film, Japanese film, or a Korean film. Let's listen to what we have for top 7 to top 4 this week. Top 7, Vic Viking. This looks like a true Viking sword. This must be the sword of Top 6, Achu. Top 5, Sumiko Kurashi the movie. Top 4, Innocent. Basically, there's no big difference with top 7 to top 4 this week, just changing positions. But there's something new this week, Vic Viking. When you heard Vic Viking, you might think, wait, I thought that's from a long time ago. Yes, it is. I still remember that when I went to the screening, the distributor said, Oh, I know there are kids today with us, but I believe there are people who were born in the 60s or 70s today. And I'm pretty sure you will find it very nostalgic and find your childhood memory today. 
And I was like, no, I was born in the 90s. But anyway, so this, yes, Big Viking is a cartoon, but it's made into a film version this year. After the screening, I heard someone behind me saying that, oh, I think the quality of the animation is much better than that of when they were little. I was like, of course. Because the cartoon was released what, like um, 30 years ago? And of course it needs to be improved now. And that's the reason why the distributors keep promoting it as the pirate version of How to Train Your Dragon. And I think, yes, you can say that, but the plot is not as complete as How to Train Your Dragon. Part of the reason is probably because Yes, it's a cartoon, not animation. I don't really know the difference between animation and cartoon, but I know a lot of people who love animation don't like how people say animation is a cartoon. Maybe they think that's just for kids. And I kind of agree with that, because I think not that Vic Viking is not interesting or awkward. It's just because I think the ending is there because it needs to. Not because the adventure of the protagonist have some good results. But I think if you have kids, it's really suitable for you to take all your kids there and enjoy Vic Viking for one and a half hours. Now, how about top three to top one? I know we have something different. Top three, Steel Ram 2. <laughs> Top two. Ma'am, are you okay? okay? I'm pretty sure the guy in that truck's following me. He's road raging. Why don't you just chill, man? Go your own way. Top one. Peninsula. Incubaga! Wow, we have two new movies with top three to top one this week. And actually, I think all three of them are pretty good materials for discussion. But the thing is, we've been talking about Peninsula for two or three weeks, and Unhinged is not critically acclaimed. So I'd like to talk about Steel Ran 2. Yes, this is a sequel. And again, it's going to talk about some sensitive and controversial topics between South and North Korea. Actually, the movie is adapted from a very popular internet comics called Steel Ran series, and the author is the director Yang Uso. When he was about to draw the comics, he spent 10 years doing field research on military and politics, so he knows the relationship between South and North Korea and the international condition between all countries around the world very well. The story begins with the death of the leader in South Korea. And when the director started his comics, Kim Jong-il happened to die at the time. So his comics went viral instantly because people thought, wow, such a nice prediction. And recently, there's rumor about Kim Jong-un dying. Well, it's a rumor, but I personally think he's either vegetable or dead. But anyway, this not only gets the comics popular again, but also stirs the sensitive and controversial topics between South and North Korea again. Besides knowing about the situation in Korea much better, you can still watch the two handsome protagonists in the movie. Even though it's a series, still ran series, and the two protagonists from the first episode came back to act again. But the nationalities of their characters in the movies have changed. And the funny thing is that one of the main characters Chung Wu-sung even said 
he was wondering whether to take the role of president in South Korea because he's too handsome. What? Because he thinks there's no such handsome person being a president. Well, that's pretty confident. But actually, that's exactly what me and my sister thought when we saw the trailer on TV. We were like, wait, how come the president is so handsome? And you know why he ended up receiving the character? Because he knew who's going to play the leader of North Korea. It's Yu yong sook also very handsome. So when we saw the trailer, we were like, huh. South Korea president and the leader of North Korea are both so handsome? Hmm, interesting. But anyway, you know what to expect and what to look forward to when you watch Steel Rain 2. And that's all the time we have for today. Remember to tune in same time next week, but at our new home, Sound On. I'm Viola. See you next week.